Today, we're going to talk about another huge benefit of our Mastern American accent community on Discord. And I'm talking again with Gilliam, or William, as he's also known, because he's helped me start this community. We started almost four years ago, and he's helped me shape it as the moderator, a community member, and also as admin. So he's here to answer your questions as well. And you're going to hear about how joining this global platform can give you access to different people and speech patterns so that you can work on your English and develop your accent in unexpected ways. And speaking of which, you'll even hear some analogies of how our community is like the Olympics and surprisingly potatoes. And now on with part two of this mini series to celebrate the opening of our free tier on Discord so that anyone who's looking for people like us can join. I'm Bianca, your personal American accent coach, and I'm here to help you master an American accent in English because your voice is your choice when it comes to how you sound. I try to release a podcast episode every two weeks, and so you should really subscribe to whatever podcast platform you use so that you don't miss the newest episode. And by the way, if you want to see the full video of the episode, it's available at Accent Coach Bianca on YouTube. Now, let's get on with the show. So William, welcome back again. We're here to talk about Discord again because we love it so much. And today we're going to talk about how Discord allows you to meet a variety of people with a variety of accents. But if somebody didn't hear the first episode about Discord being a safe space for learning, maybe you can introduce yourself again in case this is people's first time hearing you. Okay. I actually think that the last episode I didn't introduce myself. That's probably possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we see each other it's... every day. We really forget that we, other people don't know you. So my name is Guilherme Palau, or also known as William in English. It's easier. I'm the moderator of the Discord server since its inception in, I think it was 2020. I actually mm -hmm. forgot. Mm -hmm. I think it's long enough that I, I think it's like the Olympic Games that has been for years. I think <laughs> in the previous Olympic Games, the Discord was already there. That's true. That's true, actually. And, you know, every time the Olympic Games come around, it feels like it's something new, right? And the reason mm. we're doing this podcast episode is because we have something new to announce, which is we're opening up a free tier to our community, which is super yep. exciting. And that's why we're doing this series to talk about Discord, because a lot of people just don't know what Discord is. They have no idea. They hear the word for the first time. So let's kind of talk about what Discord is in a way. Well, it's an app. It started for gamers to have like a, when you play a video game, you have like a conversation with your friends and stuff like this, mm -hmm. especially when the game doesn't have this feature. That was many years ago, and this evolved with now little communities and groups, like study groups that you may have, or full-fledged communities with people you will not know uh, in real life about almost <laughs> anything. Little groups or in full-fledged communities, like in a very large number of people, mm -hmm. that they share... Uh, a common interest, or they share a belief system. Mm -hmm. Hey, we are in this community to learn English, let's say, mm. or we're fans about the uh, Marvel movies or Pokemon or whatever thing in common or a video game. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I know for me, for example, I know you said it started out as gaming and people were just kind of live streaming and meeting other people, other gamers. But now, like you mentioned, languages, some people who have like a following, you know, they yep. have it there. If yeah, answers. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It could be shows, for example. Or Personally, apps. I'm, I'm in other groups that are for people who are over 30 and they just want to make friends. Like you said, it's a way to meet people. Skills sometimes. I'm in a Discord group that is about cheese making. Of all things, you know, oh, that's, that's specific. A, yeah, very specific, <laughs> right? Or like you know, like shows that you might follow. I'm in some Doctor yeah. Who Discord groups, and for me personally, I I know you know this, but some of our listeners might not. I have an autoimmune disease. There's a support group on Discord. I know there's ADHD groups as well. And we were talking earlier about AI, or we often talk about AI, and Discord. I think is where Mid Journey just got its start originally, right? Yep. I think now you can use the website after a long while. Yeah. But before, I think it's actually the larger server. Mm -hmm. It was Discord in the millions, I think. Something crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there you could ask the prompts and get the images. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it started. That used to be the only way to do it. And of course, that's evolved. Mm -hmm. But imagine that. So we've got this amazing resource that most people just don't even know. They've never heard of it, even though it's actually quite huge. And it's global. So you can mm -hmm. meet people from all over the world. That's kind of what we want to talk about today, but let's also frame it in another way, right? A lot of people who are learning languages, they know, oh, I can use an app. And there are some apps 
that have kind of a community feel to it. There are marketplaces where teachers can go and students can meet the teachers and pick a teacher, right? There are mm-hmm. marketplaces out there. There's also apps like ones I know, for example, are like Lingbee or Hello Talk, where it's about language and finding maybe a partnership. But that can be kind of random and short lived. And so what we're talking about is creating community and marrying both of those because there's also community apps too. For example, I'm on Circle. I have some some professional groups that are on Circle and that's just an app for communities or, or let's say it's a place to host a community. Also, I used to use uh, Mighty Networks or Facebook groups. A lot of people are familiar with a group around a subject, right? But maybe it's not for language or specifically for meeting other people. So I think the thing that makes our Discord server special is it's about language. It's about meeting people. It's a global app and it's all about our community as well. So I see it kind of as a mix of all those things. And like you said, you were there at the inception. You started it a little bit. So tell us Mm -hmm. a little bit more about why you think our Discord is special. Oh, where do I start? Way too many things to mention. Let's start with diversity. Let's start with that. Okay, diversity. Okay, so what happens with English? That many people learn English as a second language, uh, I think worldwide. We could simplify. So that means that you were uh, to exposure to many different accents or many different first language. My first language is Spanish, but there are people in the community who join that are from Middle East or South South America. South. Yeah. yeah, but geography is lacking today. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's easier to list countries. For example, yeah, we have ge- community members. For instance, from- Germany, Nigeria. Uh-huh. For instance, yeah. Nigeria will be just a regional accent because yeah. they are native with English, but they want to acquire American English because they want to go into acting, something like that. Exactly, exactly. Then Middle East, like Lebanon or Russia, and then Egypt. Latin America. Mm-hmm. Egypt, exactly. Mm-hmm. Or then Spanish-speaking countries like Spain, Argentina, Mexico. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That even if it's the same language, I can identify that, okay, your accent is Spanish, but I don't identify that I don't speak like that. It's mm-hmm. not my accent. Mm-hmm. 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 For example, I'm living in Mexico now. You're in Spain. And very yeah. often we'll say, oh, do you have a word for this in Spanish? And maybe you don't have a word, but in Mexican Spanish they do. And you say, I've never heard of that, even yeah. though it's in Spanish too. There's a lot of diversity, I would say culturally, linguistically, also like a personal level as mm. well. So there's just, I love the diversity in general that you can find on Discord, but specifically in our community too, because you learn so much more than just accent or language. You know, you learn yeah. about food sometimes, some cultural events. Yeah, because so, at some degree, if we take the English language, there are some terms that are like embedded with culture, that mm-hmm. it's like this for a reason, mm-hmm. more specifically with the accent. Perhaps it's reduced. That, why is this reduced in this language that is, mm-hmm. is pronounced like more lazy, let's say? Mm-hmm. It's because it's very common. Oh, that makes sense that this is being reduced because of frequency and something that is... Perhaps in my language is a common word, but the same word in English, it's kind of rare. That, mm. Mm, yeah, it's uh, not every day word. Mm-hmm. That's why it's, they pronounce everything the same without reducing or flapping the T's. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. What you mentioned, I think we run into a lot is somebody will know a word or yeah. a certain pronunciation of a word in English, but they maybe only know the British one. Yep. So. They don't know, they learn from me maybe that, oh, there's another word that we use that's actually much more common, or we don't say it like that, but you think we do because that's how you grew up, right? You grew up in a Mm. structured learning environment that was more British focused. So we get people from all over, but who are coming in with different experiences and different accents. So I think me, I love travel. You know, I love languages. I've lived in a bunch of different places. I, I speak a few different languages, and I think... I really enjoy the diversity of our community. And for me, it's super interesting. And for most people, that's something that's interesting for them too. And we all can like add extra information from that. Like even just the other day, I think we were talking about placement and pitch and code switching. And we were talking Mm -hmm. about how you noticed in Spain, how people from Morocco sometimes sound differently when they're code switching. And Mm -hmm. I was relating that to my experience when I used to live in Jordan. And we were talking about like how we see those different cultures too. So it's a huge asset, I think. Yeah. Yeah. When you speak in Spanish, you have like a a higher voice, let's say a higher pitch. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not necessarily the pitch can be placement and some other technicalities. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same person, but it's a different layer, let's say. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like me. There's yes, exactly. Go ahead. Like now that I'm speaking in English, is oh the placement is different when I am speaking Spanish. <laughs> yeah, it's a dramatic difference. You've noticed yeah. a huge difference, I know, because you also have YouTube videos too, and we used to watch some of the old YouTube videos, and <laughs> we can really see the difference. And it used to be a struggle for you. You were like, okay, wait, I gotta change my. Oh, here comes my placement. Oh, there it is. It's in the right place. Yeah. But now it's so automatic, you don't even think about it. That's a pro I got from the Discord community. I'm biased here because most of the people I can speak in English are second la language speakers, and they are first language Spanish speakers. So they do the same mistakes that I do, always the same exposure. Mm -hmm. And then with the Discord community, it's, hey, this person is from Egypt or is from uh, Russia or Germany. It's, hey, he's doing mistakes, yes, mm -hmm. but different kind of mistakes. Yeah. And hey, you don't speak like that. Then it's quite, when you notice that this person perhaps, perhaps has the same placement, very high, oh, like mm -hmm. the Spanish I would do. Some people don't. I, I cannot tell you what's there, but I noticed there's something else. There's something different there. Mm -hmm. I cannot even and, be point what mm -hmm. it is. And the noticing, I think, is the first step too. And like you were yeah. saying before, if I'm always surrounded by people of the same kind of background, mm -hmm. and that's the only exposure I have, I'm just going to think, oh, that's how things are. But when I start talking to other people, like you said, maybe I'm just noticing something at first, but then I say, oh, that's how you do it. Or I'm going to do the average of all these different things that I'm hearing. So we can hear all these different speech patterns. Mm -hmm. We're exposed to them. And even if we don't know what we're hearing, other people do. So we have a group of people where pe some people are just coming in. It's their first time. They're beginners. Other people have been there for a long time and they can say, oh, here's what you're hearing right now. Oh, the reason that sounds different for you, that's because they're doing this thing. We, we talk about that all the time. I know you're yeah. new, but you'll get that, right? So you then have the tools to not just notice things, but to analyze them more. So you get all these different speech patterns and also like intonation, all these things. And it just helps us all be more effective, I think, communicators, being in a mixed group. Yeah, it's one of the benefits that is like kind of um, hard to get. So even if I was getting this benefit in a transparent way that I was not even realizing that, then when I think in retrospective, in the four years, the, the Olympics <laughs> that have passed is, hey, now that they realize that this has helped a lot. So having exposure to so many different accents and speech patterns, yeah. is, hey, now I can pinpoint, hey, this is one is very slight difference that perhaps is correct. I won't say this is a mistake, but hey, there's this degree of variance or is in on the edge. The voicing, it's there, but not at the same degree as this other speaker, stuff like that. And why is that? I wonder if it's just the pattern of the person or is that part of the language? Is something else going on there? You can really dig in to all these little things in this environment that's really safe and things just kind of come up randomly. We don't always plan all of these things, but you get so much value, I think, just by showing up. You come to the group or maybe you come to an actual physical virtual meeting or maybe you're just chatting online, but things are always kind of like happening that improve our comprehension. Because it's a diverse group, sometimes you get vocabulary that pops up, right? Mm -hmm. That's another benefit that you didn't know you were expecting, but boom, you've got it. For example, I think it was just today, somebody said they learned the word hindsight for the first mm -hmm. time. And we're like, oh, most people were like, oh, yeah, we know that. But this other person was like, hey, I wanted to share this with you because I didn't know it before. And also they used the idiomatic phrase, I think it was, get my drift, or get yep. my gist, right? Maybe some people know it, but other people don't. So when you come, you get all these extra benefits that you weren't even expecting because a lot of it is quite unpredictable. Yeah. I have an analogy. It might sound stupid at the beginning, but I promise that, that there's some logic there. Okay. And it's like potatoes. Imagine you're going to the convenience store or the... Uh, yeah, yeah. I was expecting this phrase. I'm holding on. I'm holding on. I'm waiting. Yeah, let's, hold, let's hold on. See how potatoes are related to accents, but go ahead. <laughs> So imagine, usually it might not be your case, but I buy potatoes that are raw. It's not They're not cut and stuff like that. Cooked up. Ready to fry and stuff like that. Yeah. So if I go to the supermarket, the first, there are many different kinds of potatoes. One is better to fry. The other one is better for... Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. For cooking. mashing, for... Ah, exactly. Uh -huh, making like a Spanish tortilla, let's say. Then 
it's not about the size or the texture. It's just the color, the quality. This potato is good or okay. it has been too long there on the storage. Mm -hmm. That is getting rancid. It won't be as yeah. nutritious or as tasty yeah. and so on. Mm -hmm. Because I'm getting an exposure to many different kinds of potatoes of many colors and sizes and kinds. <laughs> yeah, you're getting, I, I'm getting no, I'm that. I'm following you. I'm following you. Okay. Now I have judgment and I can say, hey, this is a good deal. Hey, those are tasty, but they will become rancy in, uh -huh. in two days uh -huh. to consume. Uh -huh. No, because I wanted to do this recipe. I will want this kind, not this other one and stuff yeah. like that. I'm noticing this. Then if we compare the extreme case that, hey, my convenience store, I only get lace or <laughs> this kind of potatoes. Right. It's what the only thing be? I have. How I'm going to distinguish those things if i only get exposure to the same kind of potatoes mm -hmm. the same family that's all you think exists ah, right exactly yeah so now go... following your potato yeah. <laughs> so now change the potato with accents exactly. different accents it's just of the color of the skin will be the voicing you do didn't even okay. know this existed before yeah i didn't know that you could even do this i didn't know that this was causing this other thing let's go back to potatoes if we want oh i i made this dish with potatoes but it didn't turn out like it did in the recipe oh i was mm. using the wrong potato right oh i was trying to say this thing but it didn't come out and we can say oh you just stressed the wrong word you just didn't know what you didn't know and so if you just show up you're going to learn so much more because it's totally unexpected let's go back to potatoes turns out it's a great analogy I, I, don't, I tell you. <laughs> I go to store number one, and they only ever have one kind of potato. But one mm. day, I go to store number two, and they have a wide variety of potatoes. That really piques my interest. I'm thinking, why so many kinds of potatoes? What can I do with these potatoes? How can I cook better with these mm. potatoes? It just opens your world in ways you don't know. So you don't know what you don't know. And when mm. you come, it's partly planned, but also... We leave a big space for unpredictability because we don't know what's going to happen, but we know something great is going to happen because it always does. So I'm not one of these people that likes to plan every minute of every day in our time mm. together. I like to kind of wander down the path and see what's interesting to people, which is not usually what you get in a structured learning environment. And mm. like you said, when you're in a structured learning environment with people <laughs> from your same background... You don't see the diversity. You have no idea. Yeah, exactly. An explicit example. Mm -hmm. Let's say I want to prepare for a TOEFL exam or yeah. one language proficiency exam. Mm -hmm. They will be targeting more or less the same degree of proficiency, the same for language. It's very homogeneous, which it works for them, but not for you. Because then I only learned in this very artificial scope. Then I watch a YouTube video or Netflix show. Oh, what is this? Mm. I can't adapt. I can't immediately apply the skills that I've learned because I haven't done that yet and I don't know what yeah. that's like. To follow the analogy is that, hey, is this kind of potato, this this size, so everything is pre-packaged and mm -hmm. it's this potato or nothing? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To me, it's kind of like there's a good cook and they have skills and there's nothing in the house. They can always make something great. But if you don't have the skills, then you're just stuck with the recipe. You're just stuck there. And for me... What I love, 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 like we said before, having choices and alternatives and knowing there's, this is kind of the rub though. People come because they expect to find the right way to do something. And there's not always one right way, which mm -hmm. is hard to swallow. But once you get used to that, you say, oh, I could do this. I could do this. I could reduce the vowel. Oh, on the East Coast, it's kind of like this. This is more Southern. This sounds a little more academic, good. you know, you don't know those things until they come. Yeah, that's, it's a good point. That there's no one unique solution that, hey, this is how you pronounce it to sound American. Mm -hmm. There's no unique answer because it depends on the region, preference. Sometimes you can do three syllables or four syllables for the same. Mm -hmm. Like there are some common words that you can choose how many syllables you exactly. can use. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's kind of my thing is I like to provide people with all their choices to know what their scope is. And I can choose this. I can choose I can choose this. But I, if I choose this, that's a little weird, right? And that we could consider is like, people aren't going to understand that. So I think changing your frame of mind happens with your experience, right? The more you come, the more you realize like, oh, wait, it's not just black and white. It's not right and wrong. Here yeah. are all the subtleties that happens. There's always surprises. And sometimes you see that surprise in the relay or in the chats. For example, you brought up something not too long ago. It was, how do I stress the words 
if I have two words together, I'm just going to throw this out there and let you describe it. White and house. And that was something really interesting that you brought up in the chat not too long ago. Can you kind of like describe what that was about? Yeah, because in America, I don't know in other countries, in America you have the White House, that this is like a thing by itself. I think it's when the U.S. president lives, mm -hmm. the, like the main point of residence. Yeah. But if I want to see any random house that I have one that is blue, one that is red, one that is white, and I want to reference the white one, I would say this is a white house. Mm -hmm. Not the, Even if the words are the same, so the sounds are the same, yeah. the difference is in the intonation or in the mm -hmm. stress. Mm -hmm. That makes the difference that, oh, you mean, you mean the white house yeah. particularly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So we've got the president lives in the white house versus, oh, I just drove by a white house. And that's exactly. a subtle, subtle difference. And I'm the only one with all the information, right? People are always looking and listening and researching and, and bringing extra stuff to the table. So when yeah. we say that we're learning from diverse community members, we don't just mean, I don't know, race, language, geographic location. We also mean the knowledge that they can bring yeah. too, because I love hearing from other people and seeing what's interesting to them. So that's just a little example of something that we had. Also, we have a whole channel where people can post the tips that they found out. And yep. I know sometimes, sometimes we have seen somebody bring a video and say, hey, I saw this video of this guy who did the thing. And I remember somebody brought a video of an accent coach who will remain nameless on YouTube, but they brought this video and they said, oh, look how this guy describes it. And none of us could understand what that meant. But it gave us a great way to kind of talk about it and say, hmm, my style of learning doesn't really fit with this explanation. So let's explain it in a different way. So we have we have mm. tips that other people can bring. Also, I've noticed that people will hop into the chat and just start discussing amongst themselves. And we have a channel also just for fun, which is we play Wordle. A lot of us play Wordle and we like to post our scores. And that mm. can sometimes spark different words that we want to talk about and things like that. Yeah, that the word is, I have never had that word in my life. But it was there. Or I tried that word to make the combination of letters work, but I didn't know that word in particular. Like sometimes the spelling, we were saying like, oh, I didn't even know that I might spell it that way and still end up with a five-letter word. I think most people know Wordle, but it's a puzzle that the New York Times has for free. So we all play it. And you have to think of a word that has five letters only, and you're trying to reach the target word, and you're kind of going by process of elimination. So it involves a lot of like language skills, and it's a fun activity that we also like to share too. So we wanted to add, I, li I like my uh, analogy with potatoes, and I think <laughs> when you said that, oh, perhaps that video, I, I, I don't know if it was a, sh a short or a full long format I can't video. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But perhaps it's okay. It could be good for some other people. Yeah. Uh, not for you. It's just a matter of taste, like potatoes. That mm -hmm. I prefer a different kind of potatoes. That doesn't mean it's inherently, inherently? See that right? Inherently, okay. Inherently, it's not inherently bad. It's that I don't like those kind, those kinds of potatoes. Totally, totally, yeah. yeah. It's not for yeah, me. Not, to, not mm -hmm. to knock other systems or other people or other other things that are out there. There's tons of other stuff you can be doing. Lots of help online. But I think another thing that's important for community is, hey, here's a bunch of like-minded people. I like their style. I like how they interact. There's something about them yep. that I like, right? Also to say, hey, our community is not for everybody. That's totally fine. Yeah, that, like, that's you always, cool. yeah, you can always mm -hmm. test it out and see. Because if you're into languages, if you're into pronunciation, if you're into cultures, this might totally be the place for you. But also it might not. And that's totally fine, too. There's plenty of communities out there yeah. for people to join. Yeah, absolutely. So now what about some like practical tips? What are some takeaways? We know that Discord, we mentioned on the last episode, it's a safe place to learn. Here we're talking mm -hmm. about the diversity and the ways that we can learn from other people, more about the community aspect and learning from them for our accent. But what about some like specific practical tips? Can you think of any that people might enjoy? Yeah, absolutely. So first is exposure. This is kind of passive and easy to do. Mm -hmm. Then it's practice. It's you who has to do the practice. This changes a, a little. Mm -hmm. It's not, I will just look, I watch a short or a video and, hey, no, I speak like that. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I, I got all of the tips. So it is practice. Mm -hmm. So this needs interaction because, yes, I can record myself and that's it. But if it's in a community, in a small community, if I record my voice, let's say I send a voice message, I could be WhatsApp or something like that. But instead of something about my life, 
I could say what they have eaten today for breakfast or mm. anything that we could discuss. Because the point is to say words out loud in a um, sentence for practice of the language, not for the... Um, to explain my life, let's say. Mm -hmm. yeah. I could talk about potatoes for a while, but uh -huh. practice the words. Uh, <laughs> uh, so then this peer-to-peer -peer review kind of yeah. started. Hey, I heard that. Oh, that. I don't know what you said there, or that was kind of weird. Perhaps I don't have knowledge enough to say exactly what was your mistake or your inaccuracy, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. there was something else. Check that or yeah. something like yeah. that. At the very least, you can say, we work together kind of as a team. I don't mean you and I. I mean our whole community. Like, mm. we all work together. And the fact that people, maybe when you first show up, you don't know anybody. Maybe it's a little bit intimidating, scary. Here's a big group of people. But very soon, people are like, oh, this is my group now. And I'm going to, like, practice with them and be in a place where I receive comments and feedback, which can be difficult. But that's what I'm here for. And people are happy to give the advice, too. And like you said, I might not always be right or I might not be able to label it, but I can say, hey, there's something in there. Let's check hmm. the dictionary. We know how to do that now. Let's check this other source. We can figure this out ourselves, too. Hmm. So like you said, I think the most practical thing is to show up and to engage, basically, right? Because you can't really engage hmm. with a video. You can't really engage too much with the apps and things that are out there. This is a way where you can actually kind of get into it as much or as little, I guess, as you want, right? You can hang out with not turning on your camera. That's totally fine. But the more active you get, the more you're going to get out of it, I think is what, what we're yeah. trying to say. Yeah. So uh, you know that if it's, on, if, if it's worldwide, the issue you may face are the time difference, the time zones, that mm -hmm. mm, it could be problematic at some degree. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you can have the experience at the same time, synchronous yes. on the uh, voice chat. Mm -hmm. But that does, doesn't mean that you can do this asynchronous as well. That, hey, yeah. I'm sending some voice messages. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sleep. Tomorrow, when I wake up, somewhere in Asia or in America or so, somewhere, will have seen that. Mm -hmm. And you still get value, even if it's yeah. not, let's say, live. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Good, good point. Synchronous versus mm. asynchronous. We have some exactly. clubs where we meet at a certain time. We try to schedule that so everyone's awake and happy at that time. There are times where we meet synchronously, meaning at the same time, we're all there virtually. But in the meantime, the chats are always running. It's 24 hours. Yeah, if 24 you're scrolling seven. and you find a funny video about accents or something that's interesting, you can just post that video and people will comment yeah. on it. Uh -huh. yeah. No, I just remember one of the videos. That was in Instagram. Okay. It was Miley Cyrus with vocal fry that bra, uh -huh. bra. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. This thing. And then he said, oh, how do I understand that as a second language learner? Because this is hard to understand at, at the beginning. Yeah. And then you have like a video of a bulldog that more or less <laughs> produces the same sound. That, that hey, super funny. So perhaps I cannot understand words she's saying right. are beyond my comprehension, but I'm getting, even if I don't know the word vocal fry, yeah. is hey, this pattern, I don't know what it is, but mm -hmm. I see that it's very similar of the sound of the, the dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Even> <laughs> <laughs> and Bruh. and some I, I don't remember who posted that video if it was you or somebody really? else. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was you. Yeah, that was yeah. your video, right? Yeah. So we have a couple of different channels for that. We have just a channel called Accent Stuff in general, where people can post any time and comment, and it opens a lot of conversations. And we also have um, another channel. If you're at the lowest level of all of our memberships, that means you can come to our Wednesday office hours, and we have a special channel called the Parking Lot. So the whole point of that Parking Lot is that. When people have a random thought during the week, they say, oh, this is interesting. I want to talk about it or yeah. I want to ask about it. They literally, they park their question or their video or their comments in the parking lot channel so that we don't forget to talk about it because it's interesting to you guys. Yeah. That's totally the point. We've got synchronous options and we've got asynchronous options. For example, we have one member who she comes to our club to get feedback. But above that, she was asking in the chat, hey, guys, how can I improve? And she got a ton of responses. So, yeah, exactly. The practical thing is to just be there and be present, is to engage, I think, in whatever way you are able to and feel comfortable about, right? Yeah, and I the think... other thing that I think is uh, one of the best tips, or practical tips anyways, is how this kind of builds confidence in speaking. Because I know you have a lot to say about that and how you feel so differently than you used to. Maybe you can speak on that topic just a minute. Yeah, let me first introduce, I think it's worth mentioning that it's a free community, but it's also gated. 
That yes. means that if you want to join a feedback club, it's yes. in a small uh, group of people. So not everyone will hear this. So it's not that, hey, yeah, everyone who joins the, the server for free is accessible. They will hear my voice. Uh, oh, I, I'm panicking, right? Oh, good no, no, no. point. So there are different stages. Then you get, if you want, to the gated community, smaller, mm -hmm. and you get to know the people there. Mm -hmm. It's this continuity that, okay, I'm already familiar with your speech pattern, even if I don't want to, just by exposure. Yeah. Yeah. And hey, that sounded off. Is that the different with the other apps that you may uh, speak with a stranger, like an exchange, mm -hmm. and you don't speak to that person again or very rarely? In a small community, that's a big pro. Advantage, maybe. And since you get to know the person, you're more comfortable with those people because you know that person. Yeah. So imagine the opposite, that every time you join, you get different people. Yeah. But, oh, I don't know that face. Oh, I don't know that face. Right? The vibe is totally different. Yeah, exactly. But if the, everyone is there that I already know, and the next week is the same people, perhaps not everyone joins every single day, but the overall people you already know, this is super easy to build confidence because you're already comfortable. Exactly. Because, oh, it's you and you. Okay, I don't know you in real life. Mm -hmm. I have known you on this community for a while, mm -hmm. and I don't feel this anxiety because you are not a stranger. Exactly. And it's like you have already passed the first barrier. You break the ice yeah. to start practicing. Uh -huh. But then you have to be vulnerable because you have to do mistakes because you want to learn from your mistakes. Mm -hmm. But since you're in a safe space with people you already know, even knowing, not in real life, but yeah. virtually, it's, hey, now I can be vulnerable and do my mistakes. Mm -hmm. Then you learn from your mistakes and it's just a matter of time that you build confidence. Yeah. But now, hey... I will do a podcast in English because <laughs> I feel confident. If, if yeah. This is said in YouTube. I don't mind. Well, I have a YouTube channel already <laughs> mm -hmm. because I'm not afraid of my mistakes or of yeah. my English accent. Even though you can tell I have a foreign accent speaking English. Absolutely. So two things I want to talk about is number one, the structure. And number two, what you just mentioned is, oh, I'm pushing myself. I'm getting better. We have a channel just for when you want to share your wins. And you say, oh, you know what? I used oh, yeah. to say this wrong all the time. And now I just got this right. And I'm really excited about that. There's a place to kind of like show that. And we have the yeah. opposite as well. We have a venting channel. So when you have your frustrations, like we all do, then we yeah. have a little channel of that too, because the community is there to support you. And what you mentioned was super important, the, the idea of it being gated and there's yeah. kind of levels. So just to look at the overall structure of how our Discord works, we have a, a free tier and anybody can join that, right? And so you don't know all the people, or you're talking about accents, probably other people's accents or questions in general and things like that because you're interested. That's at our free level. But like you said, there's a gated part where at the lowest level, you get to come to office hours. And that's a community right there, right? Maybe you're just coming once a week at office hours, but you start to know the people and you feel more confident and more comfortable and you're more willing to speak and share like details about your life and culture and get to know people. And then at the next level, the one you mentioned was our feedback club. Literally, the only reason we're there on Tuesdays is to get feedback. And you say, hey, I'm going to say this thing. What's wrong with it? And like you said, people kind of push themselves. So they're making a lot more mistakes, which means they're getting a lot more feedback, which means they're getting better way more quickly. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we even have another level, too. If anybody out there is a teacher of English and they want to kind of become like me and become an accent coach or teach pronunciation, especially, then we have a level for teachers, too. And we also forgot to mention that one benefit to our Discord is that like some of these marketplaces, platforms where you've got teachers and students, we have teachers and students meeting too. So you can actually mm. meet other teachers and get other feedback as well. So I think what you mentioned about confidence, that kind of goes with the idea of getting deeper and deeper into the community. And that all starts, like you said, with the free level. <laughs> so let's kind of wrap this up. We've kind of talked about how our Discord is a fantastic tool for meeting new people, but also for improving your accent and your comprehension because you're getting in with a lot of people, a lot of various people with diverse speech patterns. And so that's kind of like the one big takeaway here. So I want to say join our free Discord. And I feel like you've got a lot to offer. I'm offering a lot because I want to talk to people. And what are some final thoughts that you might have? Yeah, because remember that I am a moderator, not just a member. Mm. So every day I'm there, every single exactly. day. 
Exactly. Yeah. Fixing tech problems, setting up the new channels. We get lots Setting of input. Tips. We have suggestions from people and we, we just make those changes. Like we didn't used to have a Wordle channel. Boom. Now we do because we thought, hey, let's give yeah. this a try. It's going to be fun. So, so we depend on other people. And I think it's worth, even if you don't have Discord, to create an account just to experience this community. Oh my God. Which oh my happens God. to be the case that most people who join yeah. Uh, jo join Discord at the same time because they, they don't uh, use it. Yes. Coming back to what we originally said, here's this amazing platform that we're using to connect so many people and most people don't even know it. They've never heard about it. And mm. I feel so honored that there's people all over the world. They don't know this platform, but by God, they're going to learn it because they already know that joining my group is going to be so beneficial for them. I feel like that's awesome. So even if you don't already know Discord, join Discord just to join our community, and it's going to open up a whole world of possibilities. And like yeah. we said, it's totally free. There's only one thing you need to do. Do you remember what it is? To join, you have to join the community. Yeah, okay, you've got to join, but then what do you have to do? What's the first step you have to do? <laughs> it's a phrasal verb. We've already said it. You ah, to, to show up. You, you have show to show up. up, baby. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can watch the replay, but you've got to show yeah. up because we've got all of those like magical moments that happen that we don't even plan for. Mm -hmm. And if and then when you show up, you get all the benefits from those things. So, mm -hmm. I I love talking. I thank you so much. Four years ago, the last Olympics for yeah. How should I say introducing me to this magical world? Because I didn't know anything about it. I was one of those people that was fumbling around with this new app. You know, now I know a lot more and all, our yeah. other teachers are also getting into it too. So I want to thank you, of course, for like opening this world up to me so that I can open it up to other people. Yeah. And it has been improving on those four years. Now it's even better than before. Oh, so much better. Yeah. yeah like light years, light years. And I've gained mm. so many skills and things like that too. So guys, if you're a little apprehensive, if you're like, mm, Discord, I don't know what that is. Just join up anyways. We'll walk you through the process. We've yeah. all been there. Most of the people in our community didn't even know Discord before, but they might have known Facebook groups or something like that. So they understand the idea. But once you get into it, it's so worth just creating yeah. an account and getting started. So get started for free. Join our Master in American Accent Discord server. And I promise you, you're going to have a great time. You're going to meet people and you're going to learn so much. Absolutely. Yay. Thanks again, William, for talking today. This is my our pleasure. second podcast to kick off this new mm -hmm. free tier of Discord. We're talking about the benefits. We're talking about why Discord is great, why our Discord is fantastic. And we're going to have one more short podcast episode. And that's mm -hmm. going to be more the how to. So we're going to teach people kind of how to get into it to kind of ease our apprehension. But for now, for today, we just wanted to talk about the diversity and how we can learn from other people and how much fun that's making it. So thanks again for joining today. And thanks everybody else for listening in. Yeah, my pleasure. See, see you in the Discord server. Yeah, see you Community. in the Discord server like every day. <laughs> Bye for now. Yeah, see you. See you soon. And if you're into accents and you want to meet both of us, now is the time to click on the link and join our Discord community to master an American accent. I'm Bianca, your personal American accent coach, and I want you to know that your voice is your choice. Thanks so much for listening to this episode, and I hope to see you there.